here's my whiteboard. I'm going to kind of go over with you. I'll have to set that down for a second. It's kind of imprompt. Uh, you're going to get two or three king rigs that I put in there. You're going to get some drum rigs. They're pretty self-explanatory. Those are number, I think they're number eight circle hooks. You've got a 30-pound leaders and a barrel swivel. You'll just add a two-ounce weight. You want to use a two-ounce. It seems really heavy, but you want it to stay on the bottom. The reason you use mono is because if a big shark picks it up, it just bites you off. And you don't have to fight that fish for a long time when you're trying to catch drums with your drum. When you put your weight down on the bottom, remember you're using a circle hook. I would put the rods parallel. You don't want them really up vertically because the fish will feel the pressure and drop it. Keep them as parallel to the water as you can. Keep your drag light or your clicker on. When the fish runs, simply get it out of the rod holder and click it in gear. Don't tighten down or try to jerk the rod because it will pull that circle hook out. Um, so, And the reason you're using a light drag is because if you lock the drag down, you can't get your rod out of the rod holder because the pressure is too great. Light drag, bring it out, click it in gear, hold on, it will come tight. Whether you're fishing for the big drum or the king mackerel, your bait of choice is a menhaden. They're going to be about this size. You'll see them flipping on top. I'm sure you've seen menhaden before. Uh, this is what they look. There's two ways to catch them. You'll see in your bag uh, a couple of jerk rigs that I sent you. They have a weight, or some of them have a jig head at the bottom. That way you might catch a bluefish too. When you see these guys jumping, I mean flipping on the top, cast across the school, not to the center, because the way it falls, if you cast in the center, it'll fall to the edge closest to you and you won't jerk as many. Cast across the school, let it sink all the way to the bottom, that's the biggest mistake most people do. They jerk too early. Cast all the way. Let it sink all the way to the bottom. Let your line, get your line really tight. Point it right at your line. Rod tip low. And then set the hook like your bill dance. You'll jerk it up through the bottom and snag these guys. The other way to do it is, again, I've got those cast nets. And we'll work something out if you're interested in that. If you want to use your own cast net, make sure you use a uh, Velcro strap so you don't want to throw your cast net over a big black tip shark or over a big redfish and get pulled in. So start out with the jerk rig. We'll talk about the cast nets later, but the jerk rig will work great. Key to keeping these baits alive is don't put too many in your bait tank. Probably five or six if you've got a recirculating bait tank. They put out a lot of waste. Uh, so start off with five or six. That should be plenty. If you're going to use them for drum, what we do is we cut them off about right behind the gill and right before the joint in the tail. You got a nice big fat chunk, drop them straight down, and you can just let those guys bounce around. You'll see the other guys out there once they find the drum. Um, you'll see them catching them, and you just go drop your bait down, paddle around the edges. They'll pick it up nice and slow. Make sure it bounces on the bottom. That's your key to catching the drum. For the king mackerel, a little bit more involved. Again, once you get your bait fish, you're going to need your ready rig float. Here's some tips. Go ahead and open the snap at the top. That way you don't have to fumble with it. You can already go ahead and put it on your king mackerel rod if you want to. It'll slide up and down. You press the top. That opens the bottom up. And you'll put your line in there. Here's how you want to do it. I'm going to do a quick bait fish. I'm not an artist, as you will see. There's your bait fish. Bait fish is happy. Alright, there's your bait fish. Your rigs, when you take them out of the package, and again, don't launch or come back with any hooks on. Use a snap swivel on your rods, and then once you get out there and it's calm, then you add your hooks. Take them off before you come back. If you're going to have a problem, it's going to be hooking yourself, coming or going. So, hooks off. Once you get your bait fish out of the package, you'll pull out the ready-made king rigs. The first hook, you put in the nose, the J-hook. The next hook, you put straight in the back. Here's the important hook. The next hook you're going to put is your treble hook. The fish already has a hole in it. It's called an anal vent. Put one of the barbs up through the anal vent so it comes out the skin. That way, right here, it'll hook the fish. This guy only provides you, these two provide you with the ability to control the fish and make him swim straight in the water. Okay, you're attaching your float about six inches above the barrel swivel. And I know at first that's going to seem, here's to your line, 
to rod float. At first you're going to think, well gosh, he's only you know, 30 inches or 40, 30, 35 inches off the top. That's exactly correct. And the reason being is, with this float, you're going to achieve two things. You're going to keep your bait fish on top because that king mackerel is going to come up from the bottom. They always come up from the bottom to grab it. Um, and just like on the end of the piers, if you want him on the top, he's struggling. When that king mackerel comes up, he's going to come up and grab that fish just like this. There's the teeth. There's the eye of your king mackerel. If you don't put that hook through the anal vent, he will grab your bait fish, run off about 60 yards of line. When you tighten down, he'll drop the bait. This is the hook that will catch the kings. Nose hook only controls the fish. Sometimes you'll get him with both of these. That's your key hook. The reason we keep the float that high is because those king mackerel are looking up. They're pushing the bait to the top. Those are the easiest fish to eat. Here's the other reason. When you're out there, if you don't use this float, you have no idea where your bait fish is. He could be under your boat. He could be way out beside you, behind you. You don't know because this menhade is going to be able to swim faster than you can paddle. Okay? But once you put a float on him, you'll see those menhaden. These represent a school of menhaden. Here's your kayak. You. You got a hat on. And you're going toward the school of menhaden. When you get close to this school of menhaden, notice which way they're moving. Let's say the school is moving this way to your starboard side. What you're going to want to do is position your kayak so you're a little bit in front of them. Bring your bait, and now you've got your float. There's your float. So you know exactly where your fish is, your bait fish. He's directly under this float. Move your bait into position so that when this school of bait fish come, it intersects your float. You're already up here. Your float's about 40 yards behind you, about 100 to 120 feet. The reason it's that far behind you, two reasons. Number one, you don't want the king mackerel to see it. Number two, you don't want to hook a big black tip shark and it jumps in the kayak with you. So, about 100 feet behind you, position it so that when the school of bait fish moves across, your float is in position that they move into your float. What will then happen is they'll spread around away from your bait fish because they'll recognize really quick your fish can't stay with the school. So will the king mackerel. They're going to grab your bait because he's the weakest in the bunch. When he grabs it, what happens is the shock opens up this clip on the bottom and your float's free to slide up and down. You can see that on my videos. It slides up and down. What you'll want to do is gently just keep it in free spool or whatever tension is just enough so that when you're paddling, your float isn't getting pulled off line behind you just tight enough. Then when he grabs it, he's going to run off 50, 60, 100, 150 yards, depending on how big it is. If you're using two rods, get the other rod in first. You can't fight this fish until you get that other rod in. Get that other rod in first, bring the rod around, point the kayak at your fish, and either run him down or try to gently set the hook just a little. No bill dancing. You're using really small hooks because you want to keep this fish alive. Small little quick jerk. You're done. The weight of the fish and the speed of the fish will set the hook. you got all day to fight the fish. Don't rush him in. Don't horse him in. Take your time. Let him wear himself out. When he's close to the boat, bring him to whichever side your anchor trolley is not on. Then you can gaff him and bring him across without your gaff or your treble hooks getting tied up in your anchor trolley. Bring him across. Put your foot on his head. Then you can negotiate the hooks out. Slide him in your fish bag. Don't reach for the fish. When it's over, he'll turn belly up or on his side, then you can gaff him. Good luck. Any questions, call me. I want to see you catching some big fish.